Okay, let's get started. Um, so again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Um, please feel free to let us know in the chat where you are joining us from. It's always good to know uh, if this time suits and, and what um, time zones it does suit. Uh, my name is Louise Coyle and I am the Sales Manager at NGWS and I am joined by Catalan. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, and today we're going to take you through our latest release, uh, which is version 4.1.1 of N2WS. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you'll know that we are keen on um, having release webinars just to take you through the features um, and answer any questions that you may have. Um, but we will reach out to you after today's session to see if you would like a, a more bespoke session um, on what we're about to cover. So today we're going to go over, um, you know, who NTWS are, what it is that we do, um, and why it is that we're so so popular in this space. We're then going to go over some standout features um, that we've had in our most recent releases, just in case you are newer to NTWS or you've missed any of those webinars. And then we're going to take you through um, the six key features that we feel um, stand out the most in our most recent release. And then at the end, we will leave time for a, a Q&A. Um, so please feel free to answer questions throughout today. Um, you don't have to wait till the end. If they do apply to the feature that we're discussing at the time, we might just grab out your question then. If not, don't worry, we will answer them all at the end um, and take it from there. If we don't get around to all of the questions today, we, again, we will reach out after today's session and be able to, to answer them and give you a bespoke session. So really, why, why are you here? Why, why is NTWA so popular? Um, so we are number one for backup and disaster recovery within AWS. And really one of the key things that makes us so popular and makes us so widely used globally is really the flexibility, um, the simplicity and the granularity of NTWS and that single pane of glass. So the user interface um, we find is very simple. It has a lot um, of information that you need straight off the bat, and then you're able to dive into the tabs quicker to find more information, set up your policies, set up everything else you need. And really, um, one of the things that makes us so unique is the fact that we are deployed straight from the AWS marketplace, no matter what no matter what subscription you have with us, whether that be a trial, free, or any of our paid subscriptions, they always go through the AWS Marketplace where you're able to see some of our amazing reviews. Great. Um, so now we're gonna talk a, a little bit about some of the features that we've had um, over the, the last couple of releases. Catalan, I wonder if I could pass over to you to talk about your favorite feature. Of course. So my favorite feature is always the, the cost saving feature of backing up to S3 and archive to Glacier, because um, as we all know it, backups in the cloud are not for free. Um, so who, how many generations of backups you, you need to keep if it's due to legal reasons or compliance or just, I don't know, company policy, right? You would pay for each single one of them. And for, for companies that need to keep data for a very long time, a couple of years or even decades, um, then these features come in really helpful because uh, you would be able to save up to, I think, 90% or even more if you store to Deep Archive Glacier. Absolutely. And I think what you're saying there, Catalan, is key. I think the ability to, to store that data at a lower cost is, is huge. I think it's huge. And we may have more information on that as we go on um, and how, how we may have enhanced that. Um, great. So, yeah, really, um, you'll be able to see on the screen here that we, we break a lot of our features and this will happen throughout, throughout the webinar um, today is we really break it into three key categories, and that is data protection, optimization, and cost savings. I think at the you know the time we're in just now, every company is looking to to cut costs where they can. Um, you know, times are tough, 
Um, and ransomware is at an all time high. Um, ransomware attacks we have heard more and more of each day, um, I would say particularly this year. I think, you know, it's it's almost trying to strike that balance between um, making sure that you can save money on your AWS bill, but also making sure everything's protected. And at NTWS, we really do pride ourselves in being able to, to provide that tool um, and enable you to use that tool in the best way possible. Great. So let's dive into um, our most recent release, which is version 4.1.1, which is available on the marketplace um, right now. So you're able to upgrade and we'll talk you through that at the end. Um, so the first feature that we're going to talk about today is VPC capture and clone enhancement. So if you've been with NTWS a while, you'll know that we added VPC some versions ago. And really what we're talking about here um, is an easy way for for you to manage um, access to your VPCs and your security groups that stand behind the VPC. So we've gone from not only being able to back up the VPC, but we're also able to back up every meaningful object within that. So we're, we're taking an entire network configuration, cloning it and moving it to a different account, giving you the ultimate disaster recovery. Catelyn, I wonder if you can show us what that looks like. Yeah, of course. Before I do that, I also want to, to highlight the fact that on a day-to-day -day business, companies don't necessarily think about their VPCs because the VPC, you set it up, you have the security groups, you have the internet gateways, route tables, everything, and you don't think about it daily. You think about your data. But if you have an outage in AWS, right, or if you get hacked and you need to recover to a different account, then this very important resource called VPC, the networking side, right, uh, becomes so, so important. And if you don't have a capture or a backup of it, so you can clone it to the other location, then you have a big problem. Because yes, you can recover your data, your instances, your RDSs to the other account or region, but you need the network and the security groups and firewalls and everything inside it to make your instances and resources behave the same way and be accessible the same way in the other region or account. So yes, in the user interface, we would go here to the server settings and we have the capture VPC tab. In here, you can capture the VPC at the frequency of your choosing, or you can always capture it manually. So if you know that you made some changes in your VPC this week, you can just capture it now, then you can do it the next time whenever you, you feel like. You'll have the captured times here. You'd have a log that would show you everything that was captured. But even better, when you go to accounts and select your account and click clone VPC entities, it will list you the available options. First of all, you can clone a VPC or a transit gateway. Then you can choose from which region to select your VPC and from what timestamp you want that VPC to be cloned and the destination, of course, where should it be cloned. Um, the destination could be a different account or could be a different region in a different account or a different region in the same account. <clears throat> On top of that, you have the option to download the CloudFormation templates, both for the VPC and for the transit gateway. So you can make changes in the CloudFormation template that, that you download, and then you can launch it inside your CloudFormation. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Catelyn. Moving on to our, our second feature that we are going to discuss today is um, password enhancements. So again, if you're familiar with NTWS, um, we did in a very recent release um, add password rules in. And based on some really key customer feedback that we got on the back of that feature, we were able to enhance that. And really what I will say, um, kind of taking us off on a small tangent here is that for a lot of our features, a lot of enhancements um, or tweaks or changes really do come from customer feedback. And that is extremely important to us. So please, please keep us up to date with your feedback, your thoughts, and um, what would make it simpler, what would make it easier. Um, and Catalan, I wonder, it's actually easier for us to see it if you could just take us through what those changes were. Absolutely, right? So in the user interface, we would find it still under general settings here under security and password. And we have the password settings. 
So we can enable uh, two things. We can enable the user password rules. And then you would see here, of course, what some of those rules might be. Uh, for example, you can set the minimal password length, right? And then you can enable the common password limitation. So that means if you choose a password that is password, it will not allow you to, to use it. Uh, and it also can forbid you to only use numeric passwords. So it kind of forces you uh, to have a, a strong password. And then the second option is to enable user password expiration. Similar to our Windows logins, right? They expire from time to time, depending on the uh, Active Directory setting. And this can force the users logging into enter WS also to change their passwords regularly. And you can allow them to reuse the same password after a specific number of, of generations. Absolutely. And I think this is so important, Catalan, because I think even in, in our personal lives, if we take if we take the business side away from it, people are guessing passwords all the time to try and get yeah. into everything. And that goes yeah. from from your banking to your Netflix to everything. And we really want to make sure that your NTWS console is as safe as it can be um, with the choice to to enable all of these password rules um, and make sure that it is all locked up. Yeah, and this is an extra, right? Because we already support identity provider integration. Uh, that means customers <clears throat> would benefit from their um, from their SSO, from their password expiration on the identity provider side. But now we give customers the choice to also have it on the Enter WS Direct. Absolutely. Great. So um, moving on to our third um feature that we're going to talk about today and we alluded to this in the beginning we're really going to dive into that data lifecycle management enhancements and again this is something that we're looking to improve on release after release after release um, over the last couple of years it has been a huge priority for us um, to make sure that while you're keeping your data safe you're also able to to save money on your AWS bill um, coming through each month so there's two parts to, to the enhancements that we've delivered this time. Um, and the first part of it is um, the support for Glacier Instant Retrieval. So really, we, we've talked about this um, as the best of both worlds. Um, so as you're familiar with, if you add something into Glacier, you're able to, to save um, a huge amount of money. Um, but unfortunately, you know, for auditing purposes, if you needed to pull that data, it could take up to 12 hours. And that is a long time to wait, wait for that data for whatever reason, if something has happened, touch wood it wouldn't, uh, but if it does. So really we're talking about being able to, to bring that back instantly. Um, and Catalan will talk about this in a bit more detail, but there's not too much of a difference in cost there. Um, so really you're, you're able to choose whether you would like to retrieve it instantly or um, put it in Glacier and Deep Glacier. Um, and the second part to this is a copy to S3. So we've been able to speed up um, the store to S3 by, we estimate around 66%. And really we're doing that um, by creating more than one volume per snapshot um, and therefore making the process um, quicker and also cheaper. Um, so again, saving on that AWS bill. Catalan, I wonder if you can take us through that. Yeah, of course. So the main aspect of what we try to do for our customers is to allow them to store different types of data into different storage tiers. So for data that needs to be immediately accessible, customers have the option to just keep it as snapshots. And they would do so for uh, the number of days that they wish. Some customers do it for three days, some customers do it for five or even for seven days or even longer. Uh, then the weekly backups and the monthly ones would normally go to S3 or even Glacier, depending on, again, what is the total retention of, of those backups. And the important aspect here is with Glacier Instant Retrieve, right? you get the, the best of both worlds. You get cheap storage, which is cheaper than S3 standard, for example, right? but you also get fast recovery. It's not instant recovery like from a snapshot, right? because snapshot is still in the EBS storage tier, but this would be as fast as from S3, right? 
So from glacier, from the actual glacier and deep arc at glacier, as you mentioned, Luis, sometimes it takes 12 to 24 hours or even longer before you can access your data. So um, in our UI, it would look something like this. We go to the policies, right? Um, we go to the life cycle management uh, tab here, and we would enable backup to a stream, select the uh, frequency and the retention. And then below here, under immediate access storage class, we would have Glacier Instant Retrieve. Right. So for customers using standard infrequent access or intelligent tiering at the moment, they can simply change that to Glacier Instant Retrieve. It will not work proactively. So the backups that already exist in standard, for example, will not be moved over to Glacial Instant Retrieve, but they will be aged out eventually. And the new backups would go to Glacier Instant Retrieve and they will be kept for, again, the duration that the customer chooses for their specific backup policy. Great. And somebody's actually asked a, a really great question, and I feel like we've covered this, but um, let's talk about it in a little bit more detail. Um, how is Glacier Instant Retrieval better than a standard S3 or Glacier? Well, it's better than standard S3 because it's cheaper, right? The, the, the transfer speeds are almost identical, right? Uh, and compared to Glacier, of course, Glacier is cheaper than uh, instant retrieval, glacier instant retrieval, but it's way slower to recover from. Great. Um, fantastic. And I can see there is other questions coming in and we will come back to some of them either when we're on that feature or at the end. So please feel free to keep adding um, questions in. Um, so the next thing we are going to, to talk about, and we're, we're kind of at the halfway point on features here, is multi-region encryption KMS scheme. And really what we're talking about here um, is the ability to, to create encryption keys and share them. So historically, this was a regional service. Um, so you had to create keys in specific regions. But now with the introduction of the multi-region keys, um, it's really giving you um, cross-account disaster recovery sorry, disaster recovery, uh, security and simplicity uh, by allowing you to, to move them within the regions um, or across the region, sorry, um, and it's also saving money. So you're not having to create two separate keys in two separate regions, um, you're able to, to move them in between. Catalin, I wonder if you can take us through that. Yeah, of course. No, as you mentioned, this is something, something really huge since AWS introduced the, the multi-region keys. Uh, you don't have to create an alias in other regions. Um, existing customers might, might know already um, from the previous versions where they maybe got an error message telling them that this key alias is not available in the destination region. So all they had to do is to go and create it over there. But as you mentioned, it would decrypt the data with the encryption key from the original region and encrypt it with the encryption key from the destination region, which would generate a, a cost. So that is no longer happening with this feature. Fantastic. And on the back of that, we're talking about the, the re-encryption with custom KMS key for cross-account disaster recovery. And, and Catalan, while you're talking about it, I, I'd like to pass over to you to go over this. Of course. So this is a huge, huge deal, right? On AWS, natively, you cannot share a snapshot that is encrypted with a AWS managed key, with a default key. You cannot simply do that because it's a limitation that they have. Now, in our latest version, we bypass that limitation that AWS has, and we allow customers that have launched historically their servers, of course, when they migrated to the cloud, encryption keys weren't really the focus. They were happy to be encrypting their data, right? Uh, but they weren't necessarily thinking about this limitation at that point. So when they were faced with, oh, I want to, to do this backup in a different account, the snapshot could not be shared. And that was a problem. Now we solved that problem by allowing you to, to store backups to a different account. So cross account DR in our tool in N2WS. And even if your backups uh, or your instances and volumes will be encrypted with the default generic encryption key provided by AWS, it will work. Great, thank you, Catalan. 
Okay, so moving on to, to our last feature um, of today, and then, like I say, we will start to move into the Q&A, so please feel free to add um, questions into the Q&A box. Um, great, so the last feature that we are going to cover today is something that has been asked for um, and we are we are very very excited to be able to to deliver this, and this is improved audit logs. Um, so really, what we're talking about is, um, and Catherine will be able to show us what this looks like in a second. But the ability to see when a change happened, who made the change, and specifically what the change was. Now, we find that. Um, our customers are obviously having to change things at a moment's notice um, and they maybe don't have time to let everyone in the team know um, or even just for auditing purposes, compliance purposes, they need to show that a change has been made within the environment um, or within the NGWS console. And again, just for transparency. Um, so really, this is a, a chance to quickly review exactly what has happened and who made it. This is available across both AWS and Azure. And you can see the um, event time, the username, the user type, if they're a delegate, event type, and exactly what it was that happened. Um, so Kathleen, I wonder if you can show us what that looks like. Of course. So we would simply go to reports we have the scheduled ones and the immediate report. So if, if somebody wanted to schedule it, they could do it from here. And the immediate report generation, you can simply go select uh, audit report. There's of course many other reports here for both AWS and Azure, right? They were generated for a specific time. I will just do it from last week until today and generate. It would be a small CSV file once we open it, it will contain all of those uh, details that uh, were mentioned by Luis, right? The user type, the delegate, event type, and the log. So I can see when somebody logged in, who it was, and what he did in the in the tool, right? So if I changed a specific group, it will be reflected here. If I logged in, logged out, if I performed a recovery, and literally anything else that has happened in the in the tool will be in this audit log. Great, thank you, Catalan. And we've had a couple of key questions about that. Um, oh, yeah. Just so we can stay on that feature for one second. Um, so one great question here, is there a way to be sent the audit logs on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis? Of course. So we would simply go to the scheduled reports tab. We would create a new report, give it a nice name, select the audit report from the list, and then choose a schedule. For example, send it to me daily, weekly, monthly, hourly. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. You can select from all of those schedules. And you can select the recipient, so who should receive it. And you could put one or multiple email addresses in here. Um, and also, what should it include, like the records from the last 30 days or anything that you would like to set up. Fantastic. Thank you. And another question just on the audit logs there. Um, and I'm not sure if they asked this just before or during, uh, but where do they find the, the audit logs? Oh, yeah. I think that question was asked before and uh, I've shown it, but I can show it one more time. It's here under reports, immediate report, click on the report type, audit. Fantastic. Thank you. Great. So there is another um couple of questions here. They are not on audit logs, uh, but we can come back to this if anyone does have any other questions on that. And um, so these are just more general questions. If we could dive into these, Catalan. Um, will network speed deteriorate with the enhanced security? No, that's, that's a great question actually. And no, uh, the network speed is not affected by the enhanced security. So if your volumes are encrypted, it doesn't affect the network speed. If you're backing up Encrypted volumes cross region, it still doesn't affect the network speed. And especially if you back up to S3, it doesn't affect the network speed. So the, the recommendation from us is yes, protect your data, have encryption keys, have your data encrypted. When it's being sent to S3, we always recommend and we don't even support an unencrypted S3 bucket, right? So we, we recommend that the bucket is encrypted. We also have added the immutability option uh, I think we've talked about this in the in the previous webinar, but it's nice to mention again, right? So you can always enable encryption, object lock, and um, oh my God, what was that? 
uh, I'm having a brain freeze right now, right? Uh, but you would enable those on the bucket level and you would simply enable the immutable option also in the NWS configuration. So your backups that are going to S3 will be immutable. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for that question. You're right, that is a great question. Um, so something that we are doing um, every day, Catalan, you and I, um, what does the upgrade process look like for our customers? Oh yeah, so uh, great news for customers that are already on version 4.1 or 4.1.1. Um, there are patches to upgrade from 4.1 to 4.1.1 and from 4.1.1 to 4.1.1.8, right? And I see another question come in. What is the best practice to migrate from an old version, right? Uh, so from an old version, depending on which old version you mean, um, it could be version 2.4. Oh, I'm running on a very old version. Yeah, there's another question coming in. So depending which one, the version 2.x, had a different user interface, right? It was a little bit old, I, I would agree, uh, but it still had the, the good features in it, like allow you to backup and to recover. But once you migrated to version three and version four, which basically have the, the new UI, it's a completely different world because it's easy to use, right? It's flexible. It allows you to have a single pane of glass, no matter how many AWS accounts you're managing or even Azure subscriptions because we support Azure as well. Um, so yeah, the upgrade process is simply through a patch if you are on version 4.1, or it would be an AMI deployment from the AWS marketplace, right? Um, if, you, if you are on an older version. Fantastic, thank you. And again, on the upgrade process, we are more than happy to um, jump on a session with you to assist with that or answer any questions that you may have. Um, you, if you have any problems at all, please just reach out to us and we are more than happy to help either via support or through um, myself or one of our customer success representatives. Um, great, so we've got... Um, We've got another couple of great questions here. Um, here's one about what we have coming up. So do we have anything else exciting coming up? Catalan, I will let you take it away. Yeah, so actually we, we do have uh, some things coming up. Um, version 4.2 being one of them. And in that version, we will focus not only on improving existing features like we usually do in every big release, but also adding new functionality to the tool. Uh, and some of which I can mention today is uh, we plan to add support for EKS and ECS, Kubernetes and uh, Container Services, um, right? And then we are also looking to expand to a new cloud provider as well. That new cloud provider might be Google Cloud because it's the third largest cloud provider there is, and it would make sense. Uh, I don't think it has been decided yet, but I think it inclines very heavily towards GCP. So at some point in the future, uh, it will probably happen somewhere in 2023. We plan to have the ability to store between clouds. So if you have your data in AWS and you want to migrate something to Asia or GCP, or to just store it right outside of AWS in Asia or GCP, that will be possible. And ultimately we want to give customers the, the option to recover data from one cloud into another cloud. So basically it would become a migration service as well on top of being a very good backup and recovery uh, recovery tool. Absolutely. Thank you, Kathleen, for taking us through those very exciting updates. And again, we will keep you up to date with anything that we have going on. Please feel free to follow us on LinkedIn um, or again, your, your local um, account manager or customer success representative. It will keep you up to date with, with all those versions um, and features that we have coming your way. Um, Great. So there's a couple more questions here. Is there any plan to add any service for Volume Gateway? Not that I know of, but if you can tell us why that is important to you, uh, then we, we can forward that feedback to our development team and see what they think about it. Great. And I'm just going to make a note of that, um, like you say, just to, just to take to our um, development team. So thank you so much for your question. Um, so somebody has, and again, this might be something that we might actually need to take offline, um, but somebody has asked a question um, around the audit logs. Um, 
is there a way to export it as a PDF um, so that it, it must, so that it's read only um, as opposed to a CSV file? I don't think that's something that is possible today. It's again, great feedback, uh, good to know. And I think you're right. The audit logs should be uh, read only because otherwise data would be uh, manipulated, right? So yeah, we will take that feedback with us and, and see what our development team thinks. Absolutely, I'm taking a note of that one as well. So thank you so much for that question. Um, and the last question we have on here for the moment, um, can you repeat how NGWS tool address the encryption issue in cross region? Yes, so um, I would have to jump back a few slides for that, but uh, instead of doing that, we can just discuss it once again. So if you have volumes that are currently encrypted with the native AWS EBS encryption key, you wouldn't be able to copy the backups, the snapshots of those volumes over to other accounts, right? It's simply not possible in AWS. You can go and try, it will not work. That's a limitation that AWS faces. We solve that in our latest version, by allowing you to have your encrypted volumes that are encrypted with AWS native EBS encryption without having to do anything, right? Uh, they would be simply re-encrypted on the destination region with whatever key you have available there. Fantastic. If you'd like to dive into this in a bit more detail, um, to the person who asked us that great question, um, again, more than happy to set up a session. Um, please just let us know if you if you would like a separate session on that. Um, okay, so we do have still have more time for questions. So if you think of any other questions, please feel free to pop them into the Q and A. Um, so if you are new to to Edge AWS, um, we are used globally. And here is some of the, the key um, customers and partners that use us, some names that you, you may be familiar with, um, you know, some that are, are maybe more local to um, the kind of time zone that we're in just now. Um, we have Lemongrass, um, Transport for London, um, the UK government. Um, we also work with um, Richemon, uh, Volkswagen, um, and you'll see, of course, there's some more um, kind of global names or maybe a bit further away. So um, partners such as Versin, um, Randstad, Communate, um, and also probably I would say for me in a geeky way, the most impressive logo um, or the one that comes to mind is NASA. Um, and they work with us um, at NTWS. Um, so really we are protecting um, hundreds of thousands of protected instances, um, over 5,000 AWS accounts and over 13 petabytes of backups are being processed through the NTWS tool, um, which is huge for us. And we are, are growing every day and speaking to um, our customers about how to improve our tool every day, speaking to prospects about what they would like to see from us as well. Um, so please, please um, reach out. Um, please don't ever sit on an issue or um, a feature request. Who knows? Um, it might be the, the feature that goes in our next release um, or even the one after that. Fantastic. We've just seen some other questions come in. Okay. Where can I find the patch for the latest version? That's a good one. Uh, the patch can be found in the release notes of our tool. Um, every customer on older versions, right, starting with version 3.0, where we have introduced announcements in the UI, in the user interface, would receive such a, a notification, an announcement, that there is a new version available, and it will always contain the link to the release notes. Otherwise, you can just Google N2WS release notes and it will take you to the latest available one that we have. In there, you will find the download patch uh, and information about for what version that patch applies. Because as I mentioned, uh, you cannot upgrade from a very old version to the newest one through a patch, right? You can only do that by deploying it from the marketplace. But if you are on version 4.1, you can patch to 4.1.1. 
Great. Thank you, Kathleen. And again, if you have any any problems at all or you feel a bit nervous about doing that upgrade, please, please just reach out and we're more than happy, more than happy to help. I wonder if we can go to the next slide. That's okay. Thank you. Um, fantastic. So next steps after today. So for anyone that isn't an NTWS customer um, on, on the call today, um, but you're looking to try out what we've been speaking about um, for the last 40 minutes, um, you're able to spin up a 30 day free trial. And after the 30 days are up, that automatically converts to a free edition. So you have that forever. Um, and you can read a little bit more about that on our website and um, what that free version covers. Um, or you can speak to one of our dedicated account managers. Um, and as a thank you for, for starting that free trial, we will um, be in touch um, straight away with $100 in AWS infrastructure credits. Um, so that will cover um, any small costs that may be incurred by trial in NTWS if you want to try out a couple of new things. Um, and also just the rest is just as a thank you. Um, for anyone who is a current customer of NTWS, please go ahead and upgrade. As we said, um, the, the upgrade is available um, from a couple of weeks ago. Um, so please, please feel feel free to, to go and upgrade. Please let us know once you have upgraded, let your um, account manager or customer success representative know. And again, we may have a small thank you um, for upgrading. Um, and again, we can dive into any of these features um, in a bit more detail if you would like. We're more than happy to host a session. Um, and we have got some news based on our um, licensing model. So we have for any um, anyone that is on our standard tier, anyone that is buying the, the standard version of NTWS, um, we have included more features for you. Um, so the most, um, the biggest feature that we've, we've included um, and now in standard is the ability to archive to S3, which was traditionally only advanced and above. And there is some uh, smaller features that we've also included in standard. So again, if you'd like to know more about that, please let us know. Um, and all you need to do is upgrade and those features will be unlocked. Um, so again, please let us know if you need any more detail on that. And for advanced, um, again, we have included another couple of features that were enterprise only um, and advanced. And it's something that we've been talking about and working on for a while. And we're very, very excited to be able to unlock those features um, for those other um, tiers. Now, as Kathleen said, um, there's full release notes and upgrade instructions that will be sent over, but they're also available on our website. Um, we also have knowledge base articles, um, the ability to launch a support ticket, um, all of that amazing stuff on our website. Fantastic. I've got a question here that you would like to implement this in a few of our AWS accounts. Can you please send me contact details? So, Kathleen, I think they may actually be on the next slide for us. Of course. Fantastic. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't see your details. Uh, we will reach out to every attendee after today anyway to see if you do have any additional questions. Um, but if you would like um, to reach out to my, my email on the screen right now, then obviously I'm able to, to set up a session nice and quick. Um, and again, we've talked there about um, the fact that we have 24 seven support. You're able to contact them via email or through your NTWS console. Um, or again, uh, we, can, we can help send links if you have any trouble with any of that. Fantastic. It looks like we have, we have come to the end. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Um, so one thing I would also like to point out is if you are lucky enough to be going to reinvent in Las Vegas later on this month, then please, please look out for us. Uh, we will have a booth. Um, if, you, if you've met us at events before, you'll know that we love to give away prizes. Um, so I believe there is um, lots and lots of prizes to give away. So please, please drop by our booth. Um, and if you follow us on LinkedIn, we will be able to, um, just before the event, we will pop up our booth number and where to find us. Um, and again, if you would like to set up a meeting with anybody um, 
at reInvent, please reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to, to sync you up with the team that will be at reInvent this year. Um, and most of all, enjoy it if you are going. Um, sadly, I've not been able to make it this year, but I'd love to go to Vegas one day. So um, enjoy it if you are going. Fantastic. No other questions come through. Great. So we will close it off there. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us um, and given us your time today. Um, Catalan, I'll pass over to you for closing notes. Yeah, thank you, Louise. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you for the great questions you had. Uh, as Louise mentioned, these are the contact details uh, where you can reach our team and, and Louise, of course. Uh, we, we can join other sessions with you and go through your feedback in more detail or through your questions, right? And uh, yeah, we would love to do that. So thank you again for joining and have a great day. Thank you all. Bye. Thanks. Bye.